Well, hello there, friends. It is Sunday, April 18th, 2021. It is about late noon. Hope everyone's doing good. As good as I suppose it can be. And I uh, hope you went to church today. If not, why not? Yeah, the, um, I believe it's that fifth Sunday of Lent. And by the way, I guess if you're on the, if you're on the Western calendar, your Easter was already happened. So I hope that you had a great Easter. For Orthodox, it's, I believe, May 2nd. And it's not Easter, it's Pascha. So, but the fifth Sunday of Lent, it's of St. Mary of Egypt. And, uh, maybe, maybe I'll read a little bit later <clears throat> from, from the Synaxarian, The Lives of the Saints of the Orthodox Church. It's, uh, you know, got the, got the Biden bucks and I'm like, well, let's, let's get the Synaxarian, let's get the uh, Vergatinos, the, I believe it's the, uh, it's like the, about the Desert Fathers of the Church, um, which I find very fascinating, just, um, uh, that period of time of all those people who, was it the the deserts of Egypt that went out there and dedicated themselves to aestheticism, getting closer to God, all that stuff? Just so it's an interesting book and a, a number of other things, another, another number of other books. But uh, maybe we'll do a little Orthodox book haul. We'll see. It's uh, where to even really start. Um, yeah, I've been, you know, when, when Lent started, I remember, you know, I kind of saw like, oh, there seemed to be an increase in some church services and I didn't quite get it. One of the priests mentioned during uh, one of the services of, you know, just this difficult time to give people kind of the strength, even though, you know, obviously most people just go to the Sunday one and. I realize, you know, part of it is kind of with schedules and things like that. But all the other ones have a very, very massive drop off. And, you know, I didn't really get it at first, but uh, I definitely now do just uh, more and more, just like everything else, just like everything else, just beginning to understand little by little by little more and more um, between the church and the monastery. I think I've been able to go something like five days a week uh, to some kind of service. And even that almost doesn't feel, doesn't almost even feel enough. I would go every single day, probably even multiple days if I could, but you know, it just still got, still got a job and it's, you know, not everything is available during every time. So, but uh, it's been good. Even I've almost even enjoyed those kind of evening ones where it's like an hour long or just an hour and a half or something. And there's not that many people. It's kind of a comfy evening one, if you will. And uh, I've been very, very nice. Just kind of a different atmosphere compared to when there's all sorts of people everywhere. It's, uh, yeah, um, one of the... Yeah, the wife of one of the priests kind of mentioned earlier, like, oh, if I was interested in meeting somebody she had in mind, I told her, sure. Um, I mean, I don't know if anything will come of it. Maybe something will, maybe something won't. It doesn't really matter. That's not what I'm there for. Anyway, just kind of an interesting little thing. You know, you, you go somewhere. You start to meet more and more people, and people see you more often, and you get to know people more, you know, get people's numbers a little bit, just just slowly form the semblance of some kind of social circle, right? And so, yeah, little things like that will come up. You know, whatever, whatever I may have kind of stopped doing, 
I've certainly been very consistent on other things, maybe because, you know, once you've, once you've found something that's actually deeply meaningful to you, you know, like I said, what was it in February that, you know, I feel like I got a taste of something I almost didn't know I was hungry for, or something that I was looking for, you know, that, that wasn't a joke. And it's only continued on. So, you know, it's not very particularly difficult to do. You know, you don't have to be like, oh, I should really do some coding. I should make some apps, you know, where it's like, like come on, you, you don't have a passion for that. Um, just, just kind of stuff like that. You know, don't get me wrong. There's obviously something to be said for when you kind of don't have much going on in life to kind of pick a direction and go with it. I mean, I do believe there's something to that, but the other side of the coin that I'm now experiencing and seeing is that you may have other things get in the, you know, is it get in the way that that come up that, fi that you found along this, or maybe did it find you, right? What's the passage? Seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened. You know, when you've spent a very, very large portion of your life just milling about looking for something that you couldn't even describe, that you weren't really getting from anything else, whatever little pleasures you got from some accomplishment with Oh, I was able to get stronger on the pull-ups or the, or yeah, I finished a this. It just doesn't quite have the same effect, right? Of something else that actually has real true meaning for you. So that's been very, very interesting. And then I'm not saying that, oh, I've given up on all that stuff. But let's just say right now, I don't care. I really don't. It's kind of like with, with the posting every Sunday thing. That's another of like, oh, you went back on your word, blah, blah. Yeah, I did. Well, guess what? It doesn't matter because it was all just arbitrary BS anyway. Oh, I have, you know, I'm not making progress in life, so I need to pick these random things just because I need to choose something and use it as a false, I don't know, like a false placeholder for some sort of improvement, you know. And like I said, you find something else you find or does it find you and it and it continues to be very easy to do in a way that it's not it's not like the struggling of other things where you have to like convince yourself and force yourself. You almost look forward to it in a way. And so that's when. I think you kind of know. And it wasn't, you know, at first, it was maybe the social aspect of it. Just to get out of the house, be around people and all that. And it's still very good. And, you know, I'm very sad when there's kind of a like an event or something going on that I can't go to. But doing my best. Um... But, but from then on, it did turn into wanting to actually know too, actually trying to follow along with the liturgy and the various services and actually pay attention and kind of look them over and all that stuff. I found a book that my dad had. Um, it's um, Divine Liturgy of St. John Chrysostom. It's, it kind of looks like it's got the like it's got the liturgy, but then also a description of kind of what it is, just to understand the structure of it and why. Um, it's, of course, I'm doing the whole thing where I'm loading up. You know, I'm still going through the scriptures. I've got all this other stuff. Um, kind of make, making a daily habit of going through, of like what, for the day, going through the Synaxarian and reading about the various saints and, you know, sometimes they've got bigger, bigger sections, sometimes smaller ones, but just kind of stopping to think for the day about these people. You know, it's always, 
We get very caught up in our own stuff. It's very easy to forget all these people that came before. And you think about their faith too, like the kind of, you know, the people who gave their lives, whether it was some sort of aestheticism or just, you know, being put to death for it. And you think, wow, <laughs> I pray for even just a small modicum, a fraction to have of that kind of a faith of these people. So it's good. Um, getting be better with morning and evening prayers. Where it's not, oh, let me do the bare minimum and let me force myself, whatever. It's kind of just that you almost kind of look forward to it and you get started and you kind of feel like you can do more and more. I haven't gone through the entire section in the Jordanville prayer book for each one but you really kind of get into it and start to feel it you know dare I say there's dare I say there's even some kind of I don't know feeling of tears at at some moments just seemingly out of nowhere you just feel something you know Feel something in your cold, cold heart. Cold, cold heart. So, but, you know, it's just, there's a lot to read, a lot to learn. Well, how is any of this going to make you money, man? Yeah. Well, right now... There's other things to worry about. There are some things that money is not going to solve. You know, like with the coding thing, like I'm already old. What difference does it make if I start, start it up again a bit later, you know? Or maybe, or maybe it just never was meant to be. Maybe it was always one of those things where you just Need, told yourself that you needed to do something so you picked on to this and just kind of never who knows but uh there's there's other there's other things other things other things folks you know, even when things were seemingly right even when things were seemingly right you didn't have whatever health issues and all this time in the world, just sit down or do whatever. Um, whatever else is that you couldn't explain that was seemingly bothering you, right? Well, there's definitely, there is not going to be any going back after this, folks. Whatever that ultimately means. There is no, well, you know, I kind of start feeling better and all this. And I'm just going to go back to old ways of whatever. No, it has definitely changed something. What that will ultimately be, I don't know. You know, right now it's just, oh, are you going to go become a priest or a monk or a this or a that? What do you even want to do right now? Just continue getting healthier physically and spiritually, however much that's possible. Just continue to learn more, grow in the Orthodox faith, continue to meet people. Just, there's definitely, you know, and it's just those kind of connections too when it's based around something that, that feels important to you that it's not just well you know you you, you just met a, you just met a couple of people from some hobby or something no this is uh this is definitely quite different um and good right you keep going you keep meeting people you kind of keep yourself busy too that some of those dysfunctional things you know whether that's going to be pornography and fapping you know and it's still a struggle, but you just kind of notice that it's much easier to do. I mean, you still fall into temptation, all of that stuff, but, um, 
when you've got something else, it's not this thing where you're like constantly thinking of and all of that kind of, all that kind of stuff. And it's good to just, like I said, more and more, just more and meeting more and more people, just having some longer conversations with some people. So those kind of acquaintances, acquaintances are maybe in the beginning stages of some kind of a friendship, if it's meant to be, um, yeah. I believe that there was one commenter, I forgot the name now, who might be one of the only people who actually kind of gets it, that stopping would be the worst thing to do because, you know, like I said, I am, for lack of a better word, folks, forming the semblance of some kind of social circle and having some kind of community, if you will. And I don't think I have to tell you how particularly difficult that is, especially when you start getting older, okay? So, you know, I don't want to, like, pat myself on the back or I'm so special or anything like that. You know, whatever I may have failed on, you know, you got to give me a little bit of credit for going out there and actually interacting with and meeting people and going back and kind of increasing that. You know, it wasn't you know, oh, like, oh, I'm Mr. Personality, whatever. Yeah, you know, you go places where you're, you don't know people, you, you start talking to people you don't know, and little by little, just going through that thing. You know, it would be very easy in some ways to continue, what, sitting in the house, staring at the computer. Um, now, I'm not saying that, that that it's not difficult, too, but just continuing to do the same thing that you've already done, just in different, more dysfunctional ways, you know, there's, in a way, it's not really that much of a challenge, but actually doing something kind of uncomfortable and all that, you know, all right, well, I should get out and go meet people and go and go to this place or that place or contact this person, you know, well, whatever, that's all right. I, I would say at this point, I... I, I'm kind of losing that interest in, in having to like justify or prove something on YouTube or even use YouTube as some sort of a coping mechanism for lack of something in the real world, especially, you know, whether that's people, but, uh, you know, like something that means something that's meaningful to you, where you, you kind of use it as a, as a, uh, just kind of a false false socializing. I don't even know what the term would be. It truly is a very, very poor placeholder and stand-in for real human interactions in the real world with some sort of real community and especially something that has some sort of meaning, you know, at the very least to you and the other people, not just, I don't know, what, getting drunk, doing this, whatever. I mean, unless you find meaning around that, I mean, that's, you, you, you do you, right? So I don't know, the, uh, what's there to really say right now? I suppose if I have something to post, I'll make a video. If not, I won't. I don't need to use it as a thing where it's it's like false progress in something. And it becomes, you know, and, you know, uh, of course, it's still a challenge to kind of turn on the laptop or the, the laptop or computer or whatever phone and stare at it and watch stuff but it's almost like it's turning into a more natural i'm not sure like a supplement of stuff that you're interested with and the connections that you can make on there too on the internet that kind of both that in-person community and sort of a little bit of that internet one where there is less you know less of the dysfunction so, 
because you've got nothing out here, right? So, you know, on there, that's what that 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 becomes the thing that takes the place and I went to my first confession. That was long overdue. At first, I wasn't going to write it. You know, I was going to write stuff down. And then I thought, you know, I'll just go and talk from the heart. But then kind of last minute, you know, I just wanted to kind of at least write down on a sheet of paper kind of the highlights. You know, you can go into specifics, but sometimes it's just your general, general behavior that you are not proud of that does lead to all these other things. And obviously, and oh, well, let's just say I mentioned some things that I'm not going to talk about on here or tell anyone else. Um, you know, my biggest fear, would I feel anything? Would I feel anything or would I just go in, you know, just kind of say, oh, yeah, I confess to this, I that, I that, and not feel anything. But no, the tears definitely started when I kind of walked into the room. And a couple of things were very, very difficult to just kind of talk about. So, I'm beginning to understand why, at least in the Orthodox Church, you know, the, the, the importance of confession. I know the priest recommended uh, this book to me. It was founded in the bookstore at the church. The Forgotten Medicine, The Mystery of Repentant, Repentance by... Archimandrite Seraphim Alexiev. So, yeah. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that this is how this year would have gone, right? Once again, it's that sort of, you just envision that, well, I just need to get it together and go pick a direction with my life and just cho choose these things and stick to it and go do them. And sure, there is very, very much something to that. But, you know, is there also sometimes just an element of kind of self gaslighting yourself to just. And so when you do. If slash when if and or when you do come across something that feels much, much, much more meaningful and the kind of the more you get into it then the more time that goes on, it doesn't feel like, well, it's just a distraction that's keeping you from, from, from the other stuff to go, to go make the money, to make the big bucks, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, Hmm. And so, of course, what does the future hold then? What does the future hold? Where to? Like, I can't even really see it that far anymore. You know, what, you know, what's the calling? What do you actually feel in your heart? Other than right now, just continuing this, you know, that, that little, that little thread, you know, there's no like, oh, the, the, the clouds parting and this and that. And you hear a voice that tells you, oh, this is what you will do with your life. It's just kind of these little threads that will pop up. You kind of start pulling on and seeing where it goes. Man, if I didn't have this, I was just, oh, oh, coding, making apps, staring at the phone, playing video games, oh, man. Oh, how much miserable it would be right now.
where to later I don't know it, it really is it's like I can't even really see that far it really is right now just a pulling on a thread and see where it goes and and where where your heart takes you you know I picked up, uh, yeah, it was at the bookstore for the church. I wasn't really planning on buying anything, but I saw I had this hardback of The Ladder of Divine, Divine Ascent by St. John Climacus. It's a very nice hardback. It was the last copy left. Um, I thought, well, you know what? You know, I want to support the church. It's like it's like to get off of like ordering everything from Amazon um, and so yeah pick this up I mean might as well get a whole bunch of stuff and then you got lots to read at the Orthodox way by Bishop Callistos Ware um, is a general account of the doctrine, worship, and life of the Orthodox Christians. There was that forgotten medicine book, and I just picked up this, uh, the Jesus Prayer. A gift from the fathers. It's just a small booklet that goes over, that goes over the history of that and why it's used and all that kind of stuff. Ancient Faith, Ancient Faith Publishing. I've been really enjoying the Ancient Faith app. Some good podcasts I actually like. That's been that's been the other thing with it's kind of what I meant by it feels like there's you know, it's not perfect, it's not there, but there's just like a general I don't know. Like like a using of the internet and technology is improving towards less of the dysfunctional and just weird whatever you know little weird whatever stuff to like something that actually feels beneficial i've really enjoyed the i think lord of hosts podcast um off of the ancient faith uh, radio app and uh just having access to some of the live streams of like the various church services there's uh I like i like the uh St. Elizabeth's Convent in Belarus, Minsk, they do some. There's, I think, Holy Cross Monastery. Just little stuff like that that's nice to have access to where, you know, maybe maybe I just want to listen to one. Maybe it's a day I can't go or whatever it is. It's been very nice to have access to that kind of stuff. And um, I also picked up I was at the uh, bookstore. They had this like icon of Saint Nicholas. It's uh, looks fairly old, but I think it is like a printing that's been laminated. It was just like, well, just make any do donation, whatever it is, to the church, and then you can have this. Uh, like I made another donation, so um, but um. Yeah, as for St. Mary of Egypt. Um, St. Mary of Egypt. Well, we'll just finish off with that. But, um, wow, it's a, quite the story. Um, I think that's about all there is to say. That's about all there is to say. It's all certainly been unexpected, but once again, I say when you've kind of found it, right? And it, like, the more time it goes on, it's 
you truly start to feel it and, and you don't have to like convince yourself and this and that. Now there is, sure, there is some, there is, that has its place also. But when you've seemingly started to find the thing that uh, you've been searching for a long time, you'll definitely know. You'll definitely know and it's definitely going to throw kind of a monkey wrench in your path, isn't it? Where to in the future? I truly don't know. Right now, it's... I mean, let's see, just... Uh, in terms of money, just trying to do my current job well and trying to get up to full time if I can, so... But yeah, I don't think... I don't know, man. Sometimes you're just kind of seeking for more. And, you know, maybe, you know, if you just kind of reinvent the wheel, are you going to end up in the same same spot you were, but now you've got more money and to do what with? I'm not sure. I don't know. That far, I can't view anymore. Right now, it's just what's in front of you. And there is, there is no going back. There is no going back now. You know, the, the, the process truly has started, whatever it is. And there is no quitting now. If you do, I would be truly worse off than before. Just forget all the stuff, man. It's technically for the first day of April, but I think they do it on... Anyway, let's finish it off. Uh, our Holy Mother Mary was born in Egypt. She had left her parents at the age of 12 to go to Alexandria, where she spent the next 17 years in debauchery and the greatest profligacy. I don't know what the word means, to be honest with you, but probably not something good. Living on charity and linen weaving, she nevertheless offered her body to any man, not being forced to do it by dire necessity, as were so many poor women, but as though she were consumed by the fire of a desire that nothing was able to appease. So basically, like, man, living not even just a prostitute, not even taking money, this is just a turbo thought, lost in sin and passion. One day, seeing a crowd of Libyans and Egyptians moving towards the port, she followed them and set sail with them for Jerusalem, offering her body to pay her fare. When they arrived in the holy city, she followed the crowd, that was thronging towards the Church of the Resurrection, it being the day of the exaltation of the cross. But when she reached the threshold of the church, an invisible force prevented her entering in spite of repeated efforts on her part, although the other pilgrims were able to go in without hindrance. Left alone in a corner of the narthex, she began to realize that it was the impurity of her life that was preventing her approaching the holy wood. And I'm sure somebody's going to make a joke about that. She burst into tears and smote her breast, and seeing an icon of the Mother of God, made this prayer to her. O sovereign lady who did spare God in the flesh, I know that I should not dare to look upon thine icon, Thou who art pure in soul and body, because debauched as I am, I must fill thee with disgust. But as God born of thee became man in order to call sinners to repentance, come to my aid. Allow me to go into the church and prostrate before his cross. And as soon as I have seen the cross, I promise that I will renounce the world and all the pleasures and follow the path of salvation that thou willest to show me. She felt herself suddenly freed from the power 
that had held her and was able to enter the church. There she fervently venerated the Holy Cross and then returning to the icon of the Mother of God, declared herself ready to follow the path that the Virgin would show her. A voice replied to her from on high, if you, if you cross the Jordan, you will find rest. Leaving the church, she brought three loaves with the al she bought three loaves of bread with the alms a pilgrim had given her, discovered which road led to the Jordan, and arriving arrived one evening at the church of St. John the Baptist. After having washed in the river, she re received communion in the holy mysteries, ate one half of the loaves, and went to sleep on the river bank. The next morning she crossed the river and lived from that time in the desert, remaining there for 47 years without ever encountering either another human being or any animal. During the first 17 years, her clothes, soon having fallen into rags, burning with heat by day and shivering with cold by night, she fed on herbs and wild roots. But more than the physical trials, she had to face violent assaults from the passions and the memory of her sins. And throwing herself on the ground, she implored the Mother of God to come to her aid. Protected by God, who desires nothing, but that the sinner should turn to him, to him and live. There's a picture inside there of her right there. That's the saint who visits her, Zosimus. Is that yeah? She uprooted all the she uprooted all the passions from her heart by means of this extraordinary ascesis, and was able to turn the fire of carnal desire into a flame of divine love, and made it possible for her to endure the implacable desert with joy, as though she were not in the flesh. After all these years, a holy elder called Zosimus. Um, who, following the tradition instituted by St. Euthemius, had gone into the desert across the Jordan for the period of the Great Fast, saw one day a human form with the body blackened by the sun and, white, and with white hair as bleached linen to its shoulder. He ran after this apparition that fled before him, begging it to give him its blessing and some saving words. When he came with an earshot, Mary, calling by name him, who she had never seen. So I think at that point she had like developed clairvoyance and stuff like that. Revealed to him that she was a woman and asked him to throw her his cloak that she might cover her nakedness. At the urging of the monk, she was transported at having at last met a God-bearing being who had attained the perfection of monastic life. The saint recounted to him with tears the story of her life and conversion. Then, having finished her account, she begged him to come the following year to the bank of the Jordan with Holy Communion. When the day arrived, Zosimus saw Mary appearing on the, fur on the further bank of the river. She made the sign of the cross and crossed the Jordan, walking on the water. Having received Holy Communion weeping, she said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. She then took leave of Zosimus, asking him to meet her the following year in the place where they had first met. When the year was past, Zosimus, going to the agreed spot, found the saint's body stretched on the ground her arms crossed and her face, towards, her face turned towards the east. Her tearful emotion prevented him from noticing at once an inscription traced on the ground by the saint which read, Abba Zosimus, bury here the body of the humble Mary. Give what is of dust to dust after having prayed for me. I died on the first day of April, the very night of the Passion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ after having partaken in the Holy Eucharist. Consoled in his grief by having learned the saint's name, Zosimus was amazed to discover that she had, in several hours, covered a distance 
of more than 20 days' march. After having vainly tried to break up the earth with a stick, he suddenly saw a lion approaching Mary's body and licking her feet. On the orders of the elder, the beast dug a hole with its claws in which Zosimus devoutly placed the saint's body. On his return to the monastery, he recounted the marvels that God had wrought for those who turn away from sin to move towards him with all their hearts. From the hardened sinner that she had been, Mary has, for a great many souls, crushed under the burden of sin, become a source of hope and a model of conversion. This is why the Holy Fathers have placed the celebration of her memory at the end of the great fast as an encouragement for all who have neglected their salvation, proclaiming that repentance can bring them back to God even at the eleventh hour. Wow. I don't know about you, but, uh, yeah. And it's, you know, I mean, this is only one book of, for an entire year, just reading about people like this. And you hope and you pray that you could have a faith that's just even a little bit of what these people had I think that's going to do it I guess I'll see you when I see you bye bye